Alright, lesson 3.3 using square roots to solve quadratic equations and another method we'll talk about completing the square. There's going to be some quadratics that we're going to come across where we cannot use what we learned last section, uh, the factoring method, and that's what we're going to talk about here. In a quadratic equation where we have ax squared plus bx plus c set equal to zero, where we know that a is not zero, when b is equal to zero, so essentially means when I eliminate this term right there, it becomes the equation ax squared plus c equals zero. If this equation has a solution, it can be solved using square roots. So we're going to examine specifically when that b term is missing, so there's no x. So for instance, in the past, we've always moved everything to one side of the equation. You can just see these questions are a little bit different. All right, so let's dive into an example right away. Example one, solve each equation, and then we're going to verify, so we'll do a check. All right. So when this is the case, when we only have a x squared term and then just integers, we're going to try to split them up, get them on opposite sides of the equation. So I'm going to move the 70 other sides. So we have 3x squared is equal to 15. All right. And now we just go ahead and solve. We'll divide both sides by 3. So we get x squared is equal to 5. And now we need to solve for x. We take the square root of both sides. And keep in mind here, this is going to be the most popular incorrect answer. Students are just going to tell me the answer is the square root of 5. But instead, we have to remember that when you take the square root, we have two possible answers. Because it's basically saying what, what number could we uh, multiply by itself such that we could um, get 5. You could have negative root 5 or positive root 5. All right. So I isolated that term. Now all we need to do is do a check. So I'll do the check on the side here. All multiplied by, I'll do the positive root 5 first, squared, oops, minus 7 is equal to 8. So we have root 5 squared just going to give me 5, so this is 15 minus 7 is equal to 8. 8 equals 8, and the other one you're going to see is just going to be the same thing, because we have 3 and then a negative root 5, all squared minus 7 equals 8, but a negative and a negative makes a positive, so we'll just have 15 minus 7 equals 8, and 8 equals 8. Let's try another one. So this one that we have right here. Uh, what a lot of my students would do right away for something like this is I'm guessing they would probably go and uh, foil this out right away using the distributive property. Well, you can save yourself some time, all right? So you might want to make note of that here. Uh, if you note, if I just take the square root of both sides here, I can get rid of this squared exponent here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the square root of that side and the square root of that side. So now I just have x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 20. Now if I just move the 3 to the other side, I have x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus root 20 as your solution like that. All right. We'll go through, we'll do a quick check, but you're seeing that these questions can be quite easy as long as you go um, kind of the short route. Now if you had gone and foiled out what we had right there, it would have worked out fine, but uh, you definitely would have taken the long way home. All right. So let's try to check here. So. Uh, substituting in, we have negative 3. I'll do the plus root 20 this time. Uh, plus 3, all squared, is equal to 20. And if we see here, of course these 3's cancel. Root 20 squared just gives you 20, so 20 is equal to 20. All right. Uh, let's do the, the next one here. Now, if we take the, uh, the negative one, we have negative 3 minus root 20 plus 3, all squared equals 20. And so this one just gives you negative 20, so those cancel again. But then the negative, uh, when it's squared, just gives you a positive, so 20 equals 20. They both are going to work. All right. So please make sure you do a check, uh, then you'll always uh, know if you did it right. All right. So uh, the next thing we move into is we move into the fact that not all quadratic equations have roots that are real numbers. All right, that leads us to believe that they could have non-real numbers. So let me give an example of one that uh, algebraically kind of makes sense, but doesn't make sense with the final answer that you get. For instance, 3x squared uh, plus 18 equals 0. Okay, looks fairly normal. We'd move the 18 to the other side, and we get negative 18. Now, if you think about this right now, you can probably already notice why this isn't going to make sense, because if you think of what values you could put in for x such that you could produce a negative number on the other side, well, there is no number. So right away you can see that something's going to be funky. If I continue down to solve for x squared here, or sorry, for x, 
I'll divide both sides by 3, so I have negative 6. And when I take the square root of both sides right now, the problem is that I have x is equal to plus or minus, and the negative is, is inside the radical right there, right? So that's the problem. We can have the negative on the outside, just not on the inside. So this would be considered a non-real number. Okay. And so we would say that this solution has no real roots. So if you go back up to the beginning equation up here, what it means is there's no such value of x. So you can put that in. Such you add it to 18, it'll give you an equation that uh, is balanced on both sides. All right, turn the page. Next thing we're going to uh, work on is um, specific uh, quadratic equations. For example, uh, x squared minus 10x plus 3. If we set that equal to 0, uh, you might notice that this cannot be solved by factoring. For instance, if you looked at this, you would think, okay, what numbers multiply to give you this 3 that have a sum of negative 10? Well, you're going to be there for quite a while. So as a result, we have to use a strategy called completing the square to try to solve the equation. All right, And so this method is not all that intuitive, I have to admit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through about a five-step process where we're going to go and, and figure out how to solve something like this. All right? So let's complete the square for that ex exact question I gave you. So x squared minus 10x plus 3 equals 0. And let's see how this works. All right, so I've given you the steps, laid them out quite nicely here. Let's, uh, let's give this a try. We'll do this in blue. It says remove the coefficient of the x squared term by multiplying or dividing it. Well, note, in this example, there is no coefficient. So what I'm looking for, folks, is like, Let's just pretend there was a 2 in front of that. I would want you to either multiply or divide everything by 2 in order to get rid of it. This time, I don't have to worry about it. So I'm just going to write the same equation down here. I haven't really changed anything. So that's step 1. Next thing it says for step 2, move the constant term to the other side of the equation. So the constant term here, I hope you can figure that out. That's just going to be the 3. So I'm going to have x squared minus 10x is equal to a negative 3. Very simple so far. Now is where we complete the square. We complete the square by dividing the x term by 2. So when I say the x term right here, uh, I'm talking about this. So I'll just kind of highlight those, connect those, and squaring it to both sides of the equation. So I'll talk to you about what I mean. The x term is negative 10, so I'll write it over here. It says they want you to divide it by 2. So if I divide it by 2, I get negative 5. And if I take this negative 5 and I square it, get 25. That's always how it's going to be. You're always going to divide it by 2 and then take that answer and square it. So I'll show you what happens here. So I'm going to have x squared minus 10x plus that 25 is equal to negative 3 plus 25. If you recall, in, in algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. And as long as you do that, then uh, we're good to go. So if you notice, there's something that's special about this right here. You're going to be able to complete the square with this. You might remember from grade 10. All right. For instance, if I asked you to go ahead and factor that, I'm hoping that you would notice, and actually that's our next step, so I'll write it down here, that when you factor that, you get what numbers multiply to give you this 25 that have a sum of negative 10. Well, that is negative 5 and negative 5. And that's always going to be the case for these, that you're going to get the same thing pop out. So you actually could simplify this as being this. Okay, x minus 5 all squared is equal to 22. Lastly, all you're going to do for these is you're going to go ahead and, uh, and isolate as we normally would, just like we did on the first page. So we have x minus 5 all squared is equal to 22. All right, we'll take the square root of both sides to get rid of that exponent. So we have x minus 5 is equal to the square root of 22. Keep in mind, we need to have that plus or minus. Lastly, move the 5 to the other side. So we have 5 plus or minus root 22. Let's try A here. So if you remember, it said initially, check to see if there's a coefficient in front of the x squared. This one, it does not have one as well. So we have x squared plus 4x. The next step said to move the um, constant term to the other side. When we do that, now we jump into completing the square here. So we're going to take that middle term. We divide it by 2. So I'll do it on the side here. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then we take 2 and we square it and we get 4. So now you add 4 to both sides. Now from here, you can write this as x plus 2 all squared. I'll give you one little hint. It's what goes right here is always going to be the square root of that number. 
Okay, I'll show you how that worked. If I came back to the last question here, it shouldn't say the square root. It's the square root of this number, or it's this number divided by 2. So what I'm saying is uh, if you take that 4 that I circled divided by 2, you get this 2, or you can take that number and divide it by 2, or sorry, and, and take the square root of it, and you'll get uh, that. Uh, anyways, now we go ahead and we solve it. We take the square root of both sides. We have x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus root 7. Move the 2 to the other side. x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus root 7. So that one's exactly like the first example I did. I just wanted to show you a different one. So we should be good to go on those. The next two are going to kick it up a notch. All right, so we'll try uh, B here. Let's see what you guys think. So B, hopefully you're, hopefully you're noticing that this is a, a hair bit different because we have this negative 5. All right, so we'll make a little note of this. Uh, always make sure leading coefficient. equals 1. So what we're going to do to get rid of it on this one, is I'll just put in a little box right here, we're going to get rid of it by dividing by negative 5. All right. So notice I said make sure it's always equal to 1, if you want to even write positive 1, and that's what I'm looking for. So if I divide everything by a negative 5 here, let's see what I have. I have x squared plus 2x, that's all wonderful. Then you're going to get a fraction here, right? So this is going to be negative 2 fifths, or minus 2 fifths, maybe that would be better. Remember, I divided by a negative. Okay, so this is very similar to what we've been doing before. Now you're just going to move to the other side. x squared plus 2x equals 2 fifths. And now we do that completing the square thing. So I, I'm going to go and take that 2x term. If I divide it by 2, I get a 1. 1 squared is 1. So it's always that same method. Okay. Now here I can complete the square. Notice it's always going to be whatever this term is divided by 2. So I'm going to have x and a 1. How you determine if it's positive or negative, it's always going to be whatever that sign is. So it's going to be a plus 1 all squared is equal to. Now I have 2 fifths plus 1. You're going to have to get a common denominator here. I'm going to save some space and just make that 5 over 5. So I have achieved a common denominator. I can say that's equal to 7 fifths. Lastly, take the square root of both sides. x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus. Don't forget that. That's a common, common mistake, the plus or minus, like so. We would move the 1 to the other side x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus root 7 over 5. Okay. If you wanted, you could go and check that, and that would be um, both of your answers, two different answers that you get there. If you recall why we're getting two answers again, um, remember that we are, these essentially are parabolas. They're either going to be crossing at two spots like that or like so. Okay. Let's try our last one, c. Now notice here, this one has a fraction. So um, because it has a coefficient, we want to get rid of it, so we want to get rid of that one half. Well, how do you get rid of a one half? You can do a couple things. You can divide by one half. One half divided by one half is one. Or what you can do here, which is what I'm guessing most of you are going to do, is actually if you think in your head, if I multiply this by two, two times the one half is just one. So that's going to give me an x squared plus six x minus nine is equal to zero. All right, beautiful, beautiful thing. Well. Let's give this a try, all right? Uh, you might even want to look. Are there two terms that you can think of that multiply to give you negative 9 that have a sum of 6? No, it doesn't work. Although it looked like that one might. So always think of that right away, right? Try to factor it the easiest way that you can. Sometimes you guys might have done a ton of work right there when you could have taken a, an easier route. So uh, this is definitely one from here. Uh, you know, you guys should probably be pausing and seeing if you can do it on your own. Anyways, I'll go ahead and we have x squared plus 6x. Remember, you have to move that constant term to the other side. I will take that 6x now. I divide it by 2 in square. So when you divide it by 2, you have 3. 3 squared is 9, so I have plus 9. So we have now 9 plus 9 on the other side. If I complete the square now, I have x plus 3. Remember, it's whatever that term is right here, the, the 6, divided by 2. And then if it's a plus, it's a plus. It's equal to 18. Lastly, we'll take the square root of both sides. x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 18. Final answer is x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus root 18. To summarize, in this lesson we learned how to complete the squares. Make sure you're good with those five steps. You'll definitely need to memorize those. And we also talked about how to uh, deal with something uh, quadratic, like so when we have ax squared plus bx plus c uh, is equal to 0, when we know that that b is equal to 0. So essentially that term's gone. All right, that concludes this lesson.